Hello, welcome back to the channel. And since you've clicked on this video and you've looked at the thumbnail, um, you probably know that in this video I'm going to be comparing my old MG ZS EV, which was the exclusive model, um, to my um, Model 3 Long Range. So if you've uh, been um, a viewer of this channel, you know that not only do I cover some of the sciencey stuff, but also talk about solar panels, green energy, and also what it's been like to live with an electric vehicle and the problem associated with that living in Swansea. And as you also know that um, back in uh, 2022, in around the June time, um, I traded in my Hyundai i40 diesel um, and bought an MG ZS EV. And the main reason for that was that I wanted to try what an EV was like. And also at that time, the price of diesel had shot up to around two pounds per litre. I do about 12,000 miles a year. So that was gonna amount to about 2,000 to 2,400 pounds just in uh, fuel costs. So I wanted to try the ele um, electric vehicle. And also I still do have the ambition to be able to charge from home. Um, but as, I, as you see from our video, Swansea Council are not particularly cooperative and not particularly green. So anyway, bought the MG ZS, um, ran that for just over a year, um, well up until October this year, and then I traded that in for a um, Tesla Model 3 long range. So I'm going to just basically talk about the comparison between these videos. So I obviously don't have the MG anymore, but so I'll just put up pictures of it when I'm doing these comparisons. And I've obviously got some photos and bits of video that I'll put up about the uh, Model 3. So just to um, explain the comparison in a bit more detail, um, both cards were on a 69 plate. Um, the, the actual Model 3 is slightly older. That was registered in November 2019, while the MG was registered in February 2020. When I bought the MG in 2022, it had um, 8,500 miles on the clock. When I bought the um, Model 3 eight weeks ago, and it was exactly eight weeks ago, it was on the 13th of October, maybe that's nine weeks ago, um, but on the 13th of October when I bought it, it had 30,002 miles on it. And on that same day when I tra obviously traded in the MG, it had about 23,500 miles on it. So the comparison is actually reasonably good for, for comparing age of car and also mileage as well. So let's uh, get off uh, with the obvious uh, difference is the price of the cars. So when I bought that MG a couple of years ago, it was paid, or last year, it cost about 20,000. Um, when I parked access, I got about 13,000 13, for it. And um, I think the company, which was Powerlease, that bought it off me and also sold me the Model 3, which is in, Bed, uh, in Amptel in Bedfordshire, uh, they sold it for about 14,300-ish, I think, just looking at their website of what the price of the car was um, when they advertised it. So, and the Model 3 long range, I paid about 25,000 for. Um, the price of those has actually come down a little bit now, so you can now get them for about 24,000. I should say it was, for the mileage, and condition, it was probably the cheapest I could find in the UK. There were still there was um, dealers in Swansea which had similar cars for about uh, four thousand pounds more than what I paid. So that's just to give an indication. Um, so the price of the Model Three is obviously a lot more than the MG, which is what you expect. The MG is targeting or MG is targeting um, lower cost EVs and with their MG4, MG5 and the ZS, they are still amongst the cheapest new electrical, electric vehicles to buy on the market. While Tesla is more of a luxury brand and therefore charges uh, a bit more, even though compared to other EVs, they are still comparatively cheap, I believe. <coughs> okay, um, so another elephant in the room, um, which a lot of people are discussing online, is insurance. So when I bought the MG in 2022 and insured it, it was actually comparable insurance to the Hyundai. It was about £280 for the year. Um, and when I renewed the insurance a year later, it had gone up to about 
325, I think. When I tried, um, when I bought the Tesla, I redid a quote from the NG, and it was now coming out at um, 450 pounds. And I, uh, for the quotes, I used compare the market, and also the Quidco uh, comparison uh, website as well. The Quidco is a cashback website. I'll put my link down below in case you are interested in that. But they've got a comparison fin for insurance, and they also give you cash back on that. So. Um, it's about £50 they give you if you use their um, comparison service, um, which is what I actually have been going for. So it's about, it would have worked out about uh, £400 with that cash back on the NG. Um, the Tesla uh, came out at about 650 with that uh, cash back. So it's half as much again. But as you see, the prices of insurance has gone up um, a lot. So... There is reasons for the difference in price between the NG and the Tesla. As I said, Tesla is considered a luxury brand. It's a much faster car, so likely to crash in it, it goes up. And also, um, <coughs> sorry, uh, so not only is it faster and also a luxury car, it's also worth more to begin with, so that's going to uh, hike the premium a little bit. Um, so that's the insurance and the overall cost. The... Um, Let's talk about the driving experience. Both for electric cars, both accelerate really quickly. The Tesla has a faster top end, but that doesn't really matter because we're limited to 70 miles an hour in the UK. Um, <coughs> what I have found is that the Tesla is more refined at those higher speeds, at above sort of 60 miles an hour. So if you're sitting on a motorway, the Tesla feels a bit more planted. Um, again, that's probably to do with the shape because the uh, MG was an SUV, while the Tesla is an Air, um, Airstream saloon. And that probably leads us nicely on to efficiency. So over the course of the year with the MG, or the time I had with the MG, it averaged 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour, which is pretty good. Um, and that's a mixture of driving on 30 mile an hour roads in, the, in Wales and also motorway driving as well. I should say when I was motorway driving, I did spend a lot of time at about 60 miles an hour and I found that's where the efficiency started to drop off massively after that, or just slipstreaming behind lorries. Um, in the winter, the MG did drop massively in efficiency. So when it was cold, wet, dark, um, windy in particular, the efficiency of the MG did drop down to about three miles per kilowatt hour. But in the summer, um, with a good tailwind in hot weather, it was doing about 4.5 on good journeys, and that was on motorways as well. So it had a big range of its efficiencies. What I found with the Tesla over the past couple of months of owning it is that the efficiency is actually roughly the same. It's about 4 miles per kilowatt hour. But what I have found is that on the motorways I've been driving it faster. I've been taking it up to the 70 mile an hour speed limit, and I haven't been slipstreaming in lorries. So if I was to drive it in the same manner as with the MG, it'd probably have a higher efficiency. Um, with the colder weather, we haven't had a particularly cold winter so far. There have been some days, um, and the Tesla efficiency has dropped, but it hasn't dropped as much as the MG did. Um, I should also point out that the Tesla doesn't have the heat pump, it's the pre-heat pump version. If I had that, you could pre-warm the battery and everything, and it'd be more efficient to warm the battery, and then the efficiency of the car would be up as well. Um, one of the reasons why we bought the MG ZS over something else um, was the boot space. So um, with the Tango stuff that we run, we quite often have to drive with speakers, amps, cut, um, all the crockery, all the lighting, all the stuff we need for a Tango event in the boot. Um, the MG had a reasonable size boot. It could fit the two speakers in it, and then we had to use the back seats a lot to cram everything else in, and it was really stuck piled high. What I was found surprising, and one of the reasons why it took us a long time to look at um, the Tesla, was because we didn't realise how spacious it was on the inside. So the boot, not only do you have the flat bit of the boot, there's also a space underneath, which we find we can store a lot of other stuff in for Tango events. And the boot is big enough to get not only the speakers in, but also the amps, lights, and other things, and then we still have the back seats free to uh, load more in. So as far as um, 
space is concerned, I think the Tesla is actually better than the MG for us. Uh, one thing the MG did have was a parcel shelf, which was useful for putting stuff on. Um, the uh, Tesla, because it's a saloon, doesn't have a parcel shelf because it doesn't have a hatchback. Um, that's one advantage that the MG did have as well, was that the hatchback did give a big opening to be able to stuff, put stuff in. The Tesla has a slightly smaller stuff. Uh, a slightly smaller uh, area because of that boot. <clears throat> I should say I also cycle as well, so I quite often put bikes in and out of cars. Um, the MG was far easier to put a bike in the car, although because of the shorter wheelbase meant that um, I did have to still take the front wheel off. Um, while the Tesla, the actual bike just slides in, but again, you have to be careful with the boot opening. Okay, uh, another thing that people come up with with Teslas is the build quality. And oddly enough, people also criticise the MGs for build quality uh, based on past MG experience. Um, I would say the build quality in the MG was superior. Like, uh, when you clutch, clutch, close the door, you can get a more reassuring clunk from it. Looking at the lining inside the boot, the Tesla one looks very thin and is sort of roughly cut and just stuck onto the side. You can see this from the images here. The MG felt like a more complete product in that way. Um, so, and also just looking at like the quality of the seals around the doors, like the Tesla um, doesn't have a frame around the window, so the window sits straight up against a seal. And yeah, just looking at that seal, it doesn't look like it's fitted as well as on other cars that I've had, and in particular the MG. So I think there's still work for Tesla to do on improving the um, quality of their product over, to, over time and their finishing of their product. Um, let's talk about things if things go wrong with the um, the cars. So uh, the MG came with a seven year warranty, so it's still got three years left on this warranty. The Tesla only has four years on this warranty. Uh, oh, comes with a four-year warranty, which has just come to an end. But they've both got reasonable warranties on that. Um, over the year of having the MG, only one thing went wrong is the reversing sensor stopped working. So I took that back to the local MG dealer, which is Panda Motors, and they uh, switched it out in about an hour. Um, <clears throat> the Tesla... You do a lot, of, if you want to have it serviced, you can go to other garages if there's stuff that they can fix, but normally you have to do it through the app and then take it along to a Tesla service centre, and the closest one is in Cardiff, and they do things there. So there was some warranty stuff that I needed done on the Tesla. First of all, there was water or condensation in the back rear light, which is from water droplets. Again, this is a design fault with Tesla because they don't have sealed units. Uh, they're ambient units for their lights, so moisture can go in and out. And if too much moisture does go in, it forms a droplet and you get the problem. So that was replaced on the warranty. Um, there was a seatbelt issue with the car. Um, so where the driver's seatbelt was, I think whoever had the car before had sat with the seat in the wrong position compared to the height of the seatbelt and it cut into the trim, which is then called the seatbelt to fray. Because that's a safety fin, it's covered by the warranty. So they replaced that bit of trim and the seatbelt for me uh, when I went in for that warranty work. Um, I should also say that the door panel on that side, so where the seatbelt actually meets the central pillar, um, that was loose when I first had it as well and would rattle off. You had to keep elbowing it to secure it back in and then over time it would work loose again. Um, it looks like they fixed that as well when it went in for the warranty. Um, the other problem I had with the Tesla was in the passenger seat. The passenger seat is all electric controlled um, and the switch or the lever to make it move forward and up and down had been snapped off. Um, so it needed a new switch and Tesla included that on the warranty as well, which was good. I was expecting to have to pay for that because I expect that was damage done by the previous owner. <coughs> Sorry for the cough. Um, right. So that's um, the sort of build quality and the servicing of, of the car. Um, I should say that the MG does require servicing every year. So I had to take it along to a local garage to be serviced, which cost about £140. Um, that included the usual thing of um, filters and 
that sort of spin and also doing a diagnostic on it. The Tesla doesn't have a service schedule. Um, if something goes wrong, they tell you on the screen or on your phone and then you book it in for a service from there. Obviously, we'll still need MOT in. Um, so to now talk about the uh, reasons why we bo uh, bought the Tesla and it was basically battery size. Um, we're doing a lot more traveling now with our Tango teacher and so we, in 2024 we'll be going to Cheltenham in January, Bristol also in January, Nottingham in February, Tadcaster in April. Um, we've also been invited out to Germany in June or end of May, beginning of June, um, which we're not going to drive to but we probably have to drive to an airport. And the range on the MG, because it had a 44 kilowatt hour battery, with about 44 usable, it would only do about 160 miles on the good on the best of days. Uh, which meant that if you were driving back and forth for to Bristol, which is 155 miles from here, there and back, and there's some um, just over 77 miles there, but you, know, you can see that we would have to stop to charge. And that would be quite frustrating about one in the morning. So the main reason we looked at the test though is because of the long range has a much bigger battery. That's, that has a 75 kilowatt hour battery, of which about 72 is usable, which gives it a range of 300 miles, which means we can go back and forth. It also means that we can charge once a week at work, um, and then the car is full all the time. We don't have to uh, keep going back and charging it on multiple days. So it was basically for uh, ease of lifestyle we wanted to change it and also save some money as well because the price of electric car charging in services which we have to use because we can't charge at home had gone up massively, gone up even more since. I think grid serves now which we used to use were are now up to 79p per kilowatt hour. The Tesla supercharging is much cheaper, it's about 39p per kilowatt hour if we have to charge, which we tend not to have to do. Um, also, the charging speed of the Tesla is far greater. The uh, MG had a 70 kilowatt uh, charger built into it, but most of the time it wouldn't get above 40, <clears throat> so we were charging for a long time. Um, the Tesla on a supercharger will go up to 250 kilowatts if the battery is all conditioned. So we're saving time and money there. <coughs> <coughs> Apologies again for the cough. Um, so, um, and the big thing actually with the, the Tesla have is not only the supercharger network is faster and cheaper, it is more readily available. So we've only had to supercharge a few times, but we've never had a problem. You just park the car in it, you plug the, um, the um, plug in and your way is charging. You can go off and sort of verify, source out his payment for you um, via the app. Um, you don't have to do anything. With the MG, we were always worried we were going to show up at a place we wanted to charge and either the chargers were all completely full or also broken. That was one of the main issues we had. Like uh, We tried using some grid surf service uh, chargers um, once and uh, the tap to pay wasn't working. Uh, <coughs> when we went to Hampton Court last year, we were trying to drive back, stopped off some grid surf chargers there car just wouldn't charge. I'm not sure if that was a car issue or the charger issue network, but we couldn't charge. We had to stay overnight in a travel lodge on a slow charge overnight. So <coughs> that is what the main benefit of Tesla is. It's there. <coughs> That's what, again why we went for the Tesla over something else which would be a similar price <coughs> and a similar range, something like a Hyundai Kona, though that does have a smaller boot, but you get the idea that the Tesla the selling point of the Tesla is that charging network. It's just frankly brilliant compared to using things like Rivserves, IONT, and all that. Um, so the last thing I suppose is the software. Um, this is where the MG I think has a benefit over the Tesla. Um, the MG could use Android Auto, even though it was the plug-in variety, which meant that you could get all your messages coming up on screen. You could program Google Maps and all that sort of stuff and it worked purely off your phone. The Tesla has its own built-in system which does use Google Maps um, and you can obviously Bluetooth your phone to it but it doesn't seem to be as good as inter interface as it does with just Android Auto. 
Anyway, so I think that's uh, me waffling on enough. Um, so I think we made the right decision by going for the Tesla over it. We were certainly enjoying having it, but we enjoyed having the MG as well. <clears throat> both cars have saved us money as far as um, fuel is concerned, and both are work and both worked for us. Um, although the Tesla, I say, is working better for us. Anyway, if you like this video, please hit the um, subscribe button, and I'll see you in another video very soon.